I'm Chris. I'm Josh. And today we're going to be faux finishing a shutter. Make that two. Making it two. And here's the products that we're going to be using to achieve it. First is our Durtex used to clean and etch the material. There's a scotch brice that we'll use to apply it. Next is the UMA Urethane Modified Acrylic Primer that we know will bond. And the base coat that we're going to be using will be the Rusket. And our grain pattern that we're going to be laying is going to be used by the Spanish Oak Gel Stain and a top coat of Barathane Spar Urethane to make it waterproof. And here you can see Josh unboxing the shutters that we're going to be faux finishing. They come in a plastic style material, a polymer style material. And these are going in a shower per the customer, so that is why we're not using a wood shutter for this. Henceforth, while we have to use the urethane modified acrylic primer to make sure that we don't have any bonding issues with the top coats and the graining coats. And here you can see Josh using the Durtex, which is an ammonia-based product with the green Scotch-Brite to clean, sand, etch, and degloss the pieces before we apply the primer. Here you can see the scuffed version versus the non-scuffed version. You can see that little bit of tooth that it gives it to bite and hold to. And here you can see Josh using the same prepping method to etch and clean the shutter. And not the funnest of the processes, but very, very, very necessary to make sure that we don't have issues down the road. And here you can see Josh hanging the piece, preparing it to be sprayed for the base coat. And now you can see Josh preparing the base coat to be sprayed. What he's doing is he is setting the amount of base he wants and then adding water to it to thin it out so that he can get the correct viscosity for uh, atomization of painting. And now what he's doing is he's setting the airflow and the fan pattern so that he can get a really nice layout while spraying. And now you can see Josh applying the base coat that's going to give the backing to the grain. And now you can see Josh doing the same thing to the frame of the shutters, making sure to stay perpendicular to each edge and flat surface. It is key to achieve a nice smooth uniform coating. And now you can see how the frame of the shutters are going to have to be faux to look. It has more of a blotchy pattern and not so much of a graining pattern. And now for the shutter themselves, as you can see, there's going to be a lot of graining that's going to have to be done in multiple layers. And what I've decided to do here is to go ahead and tone the shutter down a little bit to give it some more uh, gradation and unevenness with some dark walnut. This is going to help the natural look that we're going to be trying to achieve in an unnatural process. And as you can see, I'm just kind of smearing it on. No rhyme or reason right now. I'm just trying to get a bunch of subtle uh, shades and tones uh, that are going to help us when we start graining it. And here you can see Josh still doing the same process on the other side, making it as random as he can while toning down the base color. And here you can see what the completed shutter looks like. Nice and blotchy, a lot of different uh, gradations and color variations for the base. And now we're taking dark walnut and we're going to pile it a little bit and kind of work it into the brush and then at the same time we're going to add a little bit of that Spanish oak gel stain and mix it in. We want to get it where there's some dark dark patterns while some lighter patterns at the same time.
And here I'm just drying the brush out a little bit. And now just picking different spots and applying different amounts of pressure, we're going to start laying in what will be the basis for the graining pattern for the shutter. And as you can see, I'm just picking random spots to go heavy, random spots to go lighter. We want to keep it as random as we can. And here's how it looks after the first round of graining. And as you can see, we tried to be as random as we could with it. And here we're just going to use some dark walnut by itself to give us some contrast in those grains. And once again, just using a random style kind of white, making sure we're orienting the grain the same way, but random spots of pressure and lightness just to give a subtle, subtle spot in some places and a really dark spot in some places. And here, just going back and reloading the brush so that uh, I can get some more of the darker areas. And just using what I had loaded on that brush until I am basically dry brushing areas now. This really helps soften the lines and the edges and blends everything more together. And here you can see how it looks after the second layering of grain. And what I'm doing now is what's called a padding effect. What it does is it's going to help give a more cohesive look and really even out spots. This really helps me achieve the dark tone that the customer is wanting for these shutters. And here you can see the piece we're trying to mimic. It has a really, really dark tone. You almost can't see the grain or the pattern until you're right up on top of it. So what I'm doing here is I'm wiping it on fairly heavy. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and pull some of the heavy off to reveal what's underneath.
And here I'm going to blot my brush to dry it out so that we can start pulling some of what we just wiped on off. And here you can see Josh prepping the frame. What we're going to be doing is a blotting method, which will give us that uneven blotchiness that the customer wants in the outside frames of the shutters. And here you can see through multiple layering, the shutter is now starting to take on that dark toned characteristic that we're trying to match. And here you can see we're going to take a little bit of that base color and we're going to mix it in with the Spanish oak and the dark walnut so that we can start doing some variations in color and tone. Uh, this is what really makes it have depth and starts making the shutter come to life. And here doing that same random pressure technique to try to make it, you know, come off here and there so that it has more of an uneven uh, natural look. And here I'm going to be doing a palleting technique where I have lighter and darker spots on the brush so that way I can turn the brush a certain way or angle it a different way and it'll pull light and dark and even middle gray tones all at the same time. And here you can see if you look really close, it's a very subtle technique, but it's really important in giving soft transitional lines that are easy for the eye. And as you can see, pulling up, pulling down, randomly orienting the brush in different ways. And what it does is it changes it ever so subtle, but it's a really nice effect and here you can see the random blotting pattern which is done on the outside frame which is going to be the first coat to achieving a look and now you can see that that dark tone is really coming together just with subtle variations in it that are light just like the piece that the customer is wanting And now you can see the completed shutter as in compared to the sample piece that the customer had given us. We went a little darker with the tone just because that's what the customer was wanting. And here you can see the piece we were trying to match and the frame that we have now completed as well in comparison. and the completed frames. Hey guys, really hope you enjoyed the video. I wanna thank all our subscribers that we have so far. And just let you guys know, if you know anyone who might be into this kind of thing or anybody you would like to show this kind of stuff, don't uh, feel free to let them know, you know uh, about our channel and uh, how they can subscribe and help us out so we can keep doing what we're doing. And that being said, uh, won't you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button and go ahead and click up here and maybe check out one of our other videos. And just want to say thanks again to everybody.